you really see that the canal is sort of the first step of this becoming a mature industry. And the original mill at Ashton is a great example of how this change takes place. The first mill that's built down there is the Smithfield Cotton and Woolen Mill. When they build this, it's during the embargo period leading up to the War of 1812. So even though they really don't have any idea what they're doing, they can survive for a little while during the war because there's no British textiles coming in. They're all blockaded out. When the war ends, a new owner comes in, a man named Wilbur Kelly, who had actually started his career as a ship's captain. He starts the mill up and running again He's keeping in touch with his partners, and they are looking to also expand their mill holdings. But before they start building new mills or building larger mills, they want to do something else first, building some infrastructure, particularly with transportation. So the next thing they work on is the Blackstone Canal. And this is an important development in the entire story, because until you can move goods efficiently, effectively, and cost-wise, you're going to have a real problem. And the Blackstone Canal opens up this whole new transportation system from the port city of Providence to the interior of Massachusetts. And the only reason Worcester is selected, basically, because it's where the water, the Blackstone River ends, or begins, as the case may be. If I'm looking from a canal perspective, I'm going upstream, so it's where it ends. And the bricks come together to build this uh, marvelous headwater for the canal. The canal becomes a key piece of transportation. Not only does it bring goods up and down the valley, but also brings people again back to the water. You see tremendous growth along the mills because now it's easy to move goods. I can bring machines up to Worcester. I can send finished product down. 